Good evening. Amid fears of escalating violence in the north, loyalist sources have linked the Red Hand Commando Group to the attempted bomb attack on a Sinn Féin office in Belfast today. According to the sources, the incident was what they called a measured response to the continuing IRA violence. Meanwhile, the IRA has admitted it carried out last night's sniper attack on a policeman in South Armagh. As locals cleaned up the damage following a number of controlled explosions, the security forces said the huge bomb was defused just minutes before it was due to explode. 90 pounds of homemade explosives had been packed into a beer keg and left in the back of a taxi, which had been hijacked earlier at gunpoint on the loyalist Shankill Road. Loyalist sources are describing it as another measured response to continued IRA violence. Those sources link it to the Red Hand Commando Group. It means the Loyalist ceasefire has been broken by all three organisations which make up the combined Loyalist military command. Meanwhile, the IRA has admitted carrying out last night's sniper attack in which a policeman was injured. It happened in South Armagh, an area which the security forces consider too dangerous to travel by road. However, they do mount foot patrols, and the policeman was shot in the leg by a sniper as a joint RUC British Army foot patrol left the well-fortified Forkill RUC station. His condition in hospital is described as serious but stable. Today, the RUC put on display the £1,000 bomb, which had been concealed on the side of the road near the Ballykindler British Army base. The public are quite prepared to uh, alert the police and security forces to these devices. And so their word uh, to the terrorist is, get out of this country. Despite this increase in violence, there's mounting speculation in some circles that the IRA will call a ceasefire in the run-up to the British general election. At an Easter rally in West Belfast, the Sinn Féin leader, Gerry Adams, said the general election had created a chance to reconstruct the peace process. The election and the new administration taking part in London do create a new opportunity to reconstruct a real peace process. But that cannot be accomplished without Irish Republican involvement. Earlier from the same platform, the IRA read out its hardline Easter message calling for a British withdrawal. Security sources believe the Ballykilner bomb was an attempt by the IRA at an Easter spectacular. They believe there's more IRA violence to come in the days and weeks ahead. It will be concentrated on border areas and in Belfast. Gardaí have described as very significant the discovery of an IRA training camp in County Monaghan. Throughout the day, Garda experts have been examining the camp near Scotstown in a remote mountain area close to the border. The training camp was in a remote mountain area several miles from where Gardaí believe this provisional IRA propaganda video was made a few years ago. Acting on intelligence reports which indicated more recent activity in the area, Gardaí from Monaghan carried out a series of searches before locating the camp deep inside an isolated pine forest. This area is so remote we had to drive about two miles up rough mountain tracks and then walk about another mile over swampy boggy land to get to this plantation where the training camp was hidden. This hut was the sleeping quarters and as Garda experts went through it with a fine tooth comb today, they revealed that the first search of the area had unearthed 500 rounds of live ammunition for a Kalashnikov assault rifle. The second search had recovered a stolen motorcycle which Gardaí believed was to be used in an armed robbery and the third located three barrack buster mortars. More recent searches revealed the training camp. Not far from the sleeping quarters, Gardaí found the first firing range where trainees had been practicing with the IRA's horizontal type mortar which is fired from the shoulder. The second firing range was underground and designed in such a way that guns could be fired through two long tubes from either a kneeling or lying position. Almost a thousand empty shells showed that it had been used extensively for firing Kalashnikov rifles. Well, it's very significant in that it disrupts their activities in the short term. It prevents them from carrying out the activities that they have been engaged in. And it's also a major morale boost for the local guards operating and policing this area. And perhaps it might save lives across the border? Absolutely, certainly. The journalist Vincent Brown